Hello, 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 Jesse James Beads family. It's your girl Gem here. And although it doesn't actually feel much like spring today here in the United Kingdom, we're celebrating with JJB Boutique Spring Collection. And I have got so many beautiful things just to show you a little hint. If you've not seen this brand new collection yet, I'm going to share a couple of key pieces with you and then we're going to make some earrings. So for the pieces we're going to work on together today, what I wanted to do was show you an example of what you can achieve with very, very simple wire techniques. So so why don't we pop down to the board and take a bit of a look at some of our beautiful JJB Boutique Spring Collections. Do feel free to say hello. Hazel is in. Hazel said hello. Let's start taking a look at this beautiful collection together. Can you still hear me and see me okay? Maureen has joined us. Hello my darlings. It's always lovely to have your company. So I wanted to share with you some of the absolutely gorgeous goodies that we have in our brand new collection today. And I have a selection of items on the board just to share with you some spring spiration. You see what I did there? Spring spiration, does that work? Don't judge me, it's been a long day. <laughs> so why don't we start with something exceptional? Can you see and hear me okay? Guys, just pop me a quick wave. Huggles, Gem and everyone from Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Always lovely to see your smiling face pop up. So this strand is called Apricot Delight. And oh my goodness, these huge faceted coated ovals are incredibly eye-catching. Anne is in from California and Jessica says yes. I'm so glad that you can see and hear me and that I'm not talking to myself because that's kind of sad. I mean I do talk to myself quite a lot because well no one else will put up with me to be quite honest. So here we have a beautiful beautiful strand in a lovely subtle sheen collection of colours. I adore these composite beads because you have so much in just one piece. So if all you wanted to do was cut your strand and work with these feature composite beads, that would be amazing. Yes, they are pretty indeed. You've also got this absolute stunner of a centrepiece, along with all of your spacer beads. You've got bead caps. Now, is that a shell bead cap? I feel like it might be shell or it might be resin. I'm not 100% certain. Whatever it's made of, it's beautiful. And then you have got these champagne toned glass pearls. Exquisite. We've got rhinestone spacers and a couple of these beautiful, almost imperial topaz coloured little droplets on the end, which is gorgeous. So that's just one of the pieces I just want to share with you quickly today before we get making together. So when I've gone through these, I'd love to know what your favourites are from this mini collection. That was Apricot Delight. So I've got some check uh, stones now, sorry, check beads now. They are absolutely fabulous. Now I'm just going to pop one of these out. It's very easy to see the textured ones. You've got this pressed effect. If I said that they were like a very sexy little sand dollar, would that make sense? Hi, Diane. I love the new beads. Me too. Aren't they gorgeous? When we've talked about the collection on the board, I'd love to know what your favourites are. So you've got these pressed beads. They are beautiful. But I just wanted to pop one of these out as well. Happy to be here. Hello, lovely gem, says Cherie. Hello, Cherie, darling. How are you? Now, these are not only a couple of different tones you've got this i guess a french navy on either side and then you've got this sultry gray with an almost like a pearlescent undercolor on it these are fabulous just thrown one on the board i mean come on it's me i think we know i'm going to drop something so those come packed up ready to use those are fabulous colors i do love those this is one of the first things that caught my eye. Uh, Diane is suggesting that the audio is not going well. I wonder if that's local for Diane. 
Picasso finish. I like that idea. Is everybody else getting loud and clear audio? I always do a test before I come live and everything was crystal. So let me know if your audio is OK. How gorgeous is this spring nest? Now, I don't actually remember whether that's a swallow or a swift. Maureen's audio is good. Jessica's audio is good. And Anne's audio is good. That's good news. Uh, to the lovely girl who was having problems with the audio, if you log out and log back in again, it may clear the FB gremlins. Thank you guys for letting me know that your audio is clear. Anne says, beautiful new beads. Love the bird, says Cherie, loud and clear. OMG, cute. I know, right? How adorable is that? Just an absolutely gorgeous and very festive for this spring time of year. So that's, I think it's called Eggs in a Nest, but I have not got the mental capacity to remember everything, I'm afraid. Let's pop that one out of the way. Now, this is a diffuser or a sphere holder. So you can obviously put whatever you want in there, but I do believe that you can pop either a compressed organic cotton for instance pad with a few drops of essential oil but what I like to do with these is to use lava stone and if you put a little drop of essential oil on preferably a natural uncoloured lava stone the smell will be with you all day long how utterly stunning is that enamel work so that clips up closed like so and you've got this beautiful do you know what it's like a pad paradra it's like a, a, a lily what are they called you know, like a lotus blossom. Pad Paradja. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Perfect for a lava bead, says Jessica and Cherie. Yes, perfect. Diane says, maybe it's because I'm outside in the beautiful sunshine with my dogs. I am jealous of the sunshine. It's been bleh here today. That's B-L-E-H. Bleh. That's what it's like at the moment. But I'm going to see my dogs after the live and give them lots of huggles. This is a beautiful piece to work with at any time of the year. But I do feel that this is just gorgeous for springtime. So that's one to consider. We've also got these lentil beads. Now, I'm not sure that I've ever seen a lentil quite this saucy. Good evening, Gem and everyone, says Margaret. And Margaret is joining us from Edinburgh, where it is indeed just gone 5pm. Whereabouts are you all calling in from at the moment? I know we have some Floridians with us. We have California represented. Well, let me know where you're coming in from. These are gorgeous, though, because you have this... It's a translucent blue and it's very reminiscent of a certain gemstone that I won't mention. But it's got this sultry gold around the outside. So you get a beautiful effect in movement. Florida for Jessica. Iowa Southwest for Melissa. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have your company. They are such a gorgeous colour. Let's pop that with the collection. So I also have, now these usually come stranded, but I took one look at it and it went bang. <laughs> Portage, Indiana, if I've pronounced that incorrectly, I'm sorry. So far, my favourite, pouring rain in Edinburgh, Connecticut, where it's sunny and high 60s. That blue is gorgeous, so yummy, isn't it, Melissa? Look at these babies. Now, these were stranded, but I looked at them and then they were not stranded anymore. They are flat drilled. There's a good drill aperture as well. And I'm just thinking how much you could make with that. That's a single strand. Sometimes when you're working with an organic like this, this is a shell bead. It's really, really fun to de-strand the, the um, core material from that strand. So you can see just how much you get to work with. There's oodles. 70 degrees, 21 in California. <gasps> super jealous i'm happy for you though is it swimming weather yet love <laughs> let's see what else we have so daisy chain is a bead mix of two parts diane i lived in Tor torrington i'm pronouncing very poorly tonight when i was younger Jesse James Beads Daisy Chain. So you've got two parts to this mix. And oh my word, we've got daisies with dual aspects to them. So, yeah, they are double-sided, yellow and white classic daisies. But you've got loops on either end for a connector. 
You've got some really fun pieces in here, but my eyes are immediately drawn to those gorgeous, gorgeous ladybirds. Lucky you, says Margaret. Yes, I completely agree. 21 degrees and blue sky would be perfect. You also get all of this festive joy. Oh my goodness. Wow. So there's some scallop shaped petal beads in here. If I said billions, you'd know that actually I don't mean billions. I just mean lots. So there's lots and lots to choose from and work with in this. All fresh spring tones and lots of fun shapes as well. That's a really glorious collection. I might crack that one out later to play with. That's about an hour from me in Stamford. Where do you live now? Ah, oh, Jessica's in the south. She's in Florida. So there's your daisy chain bead collection. And I have got two of these hexagon strands. These are utterly fabulous. Check these babies out. Not swim weather yet. Do you know what? I think at 21 degrees, I might give it a go. That's because it's so cold here most of the time that 21 degrees would be t-shirt weather. And I think I might just jump in the sea. <laughs> Lucky you, says Jessica. Uh, to Jessica from Margaret, sorry. So I've got two strands here. You've got this beautiful spring colourway. Look at the faceting on these. So this is a classical, elegant gemstone cut. This, I imagine, is a treated glass, so like a crystal. But it's got that beautiful coating to give you flashes of pink. What an absolutely gorgeous strand we have here. And it's long. Look at that. That's doubled over. That's all one strand. And then last but not least on the board before I crack on with what we're working with today. Debbie says, hey, everyone. Jessica's got a brother and sister from the place that I can't pronounce. Sorry. Aren't they gorgeous? Everybody loves the beads in the JJB Boutique Spring Collection. These ones really, really caught my eye, though, because there is a specific location that creates, it doesn't create, I beg your pardon, it mines for an imperial topaz. And that's very much what this reminds me of. Of course, if that was Imperial Topaz, it would probably be many, many orders of magnitude more than my weekly grocery bill. Stunning gem, says Margaret. Aren't they gorgeous? So that was the last of what I'm going to show you before we look at Market Basket. Now, Market Basket is the chosen bead mix of the day. That's what we're going to work with to create some easy, fun, adaptable earrings. So these are the, some of the beads that I'm going to be working with. And these all came out of this mix. So there's so much more in here besides. You've got these beautiful little seed bead composite. Huge, fun. Can you imagine making a little black-faced sheep? Little black-faced sheep. Like, meh. I'm sorry, my brain went somewhere else then. Oh, I need that one. Now, I think, I'm not sure what these are, but I love the pattern on them. I think they might be a wood. They certainly look wood, sh wood colour, way and wood pattern to me, but I might be wrong. I'm not an expert. These are absolutely fantastic. Look at those. So you've got that orange undertone with a pink hit over the top. They are gorgeous. I'm not going to spend too much longer on this because I want to crack on with our tutorial. But I do want to show you, I adore when beads like this have two different finishes. So you have this buff finish and then you have the super high polish finish. And the juxtaposition between them means that you're looking at a single colour bead, but you get that myriad of points of light and interest they're gorgeous do you ship out from your live sale yes my darling has it not come through yet i will check that with the post office okay my darling love it not a bad thing says sheree thank you sweetheart i appreciate that i appreciate that jessica will chat about this after the show my lovely i'll find the tracking details and work out where it's got to okay so we have lots of crackle glass we have got these utterly stunning pieces as well. So it's enamel, but it's on two layers. So you've got the inner, are they called stamen in a flower? The pointy uppy bits. And then you've got petals at the back. And even on the rear, 
you've got this beautiful textured gold as well they are all beautiful now again i'm not sure what this is made of but the texturing i hope you can see this as clearly as i can on my feedback screen look at those flowers a bajillion flowers I imagine if you wanted to, you could dust that with gilding powder or you could even paint it beautiful. I actually quite like it in this colourway anyway, but that's adorable. So lots and lots to play with. And this, let me just show you, this is my box that I have left over from cr creating the two pairs of earrings that I'm going to show you the techniques for. Now these are endlessly adaptable. So I'm going to show you some very easy wire techniques and I'm only going to be working with one gauge of wire. Looks like clay. It feels like it might be clay, Cherie. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I've got some gilding powder somewhere which are a high shine metallic and I think I might just dust a little bit of the bronze or the gold into those beautiful floral beads. So I am working what what are essentially scrap lengths. This is 18 gauge round wire. It's one of my favourite gauges to work with. I'm of the strong belief that if you have 18 and 26 gauges, for you in the UK, that's one millimetre and 0.4 millimetre gauge wires. You can achieve pretty much anything. So I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques with this, but I also want to talk to you about the use of mixed metal in jewellery in jewellery making I don't know what edia was I was thinking of the word media and then my mouth just said things I would love to see your buff metallic to bring out the pattern absolutely I've got to find my uh, little powder pots I'm not entirely sure whereabouts they are my office is organized chaos much like my life so I have been making use of short sections of wire so this piece here is just simple loops on either end and I'm using the giant faceted rondelles with bead caps and I will make some of these as well but what I want you to understand is how easy it is for you to adapt these to your taste. So I quite like long dangly earrings with lots of movement but I have a, a client who's been buying from me for about 13 years now and she just likes straight single wire drop earrings with beads and that's it nothing dingling or dangling around but I like the movement Sarah had a bed spring reveal and called them cinnabar well I well well I don't know what that means <laughs> uh, hello from Gabriella hello and welcome to you darling thanks for joining us so what you may have noticed is that I have used some of those gorgeous faceted hexagons with the spring green colourway. You do actually get a couple of those in the beautiful Market Basket Bead Blend. They are fab. So I've used one of the strawberry charms just on a simple jump ring just to add interest and detail to my earrings i've also got doubled up earring drops with two of my favorite charms how adorable is this dragonfly with rhinestone wings highly detailed and sometimes when people create dragonflies in jewelry or for home decor or for artworks crafting and the such they are very very uniform what i particularly love about these is that his tail is just very very subtly shifting over to one side much like a dragonfly who's up to stuff and if we look on the rear let me just turn that over. You can see that the quality of finish extends to both sides. I've used mixed metals between those possibly wood beads. Diane says I love dragonflies. Me too. Do take care though, because if they bite you, it jolly well hurts. Uh, hello, Gabriella, says Margaret. The uh, comments on my feedback screen are going up and down. It's crazy. They're just bibbling around all over the shop so what was your favorite strand from the reveal that we looked at a little time ago we looked at all those different strands and bead mixes what did you prefer most what will you rush away and think about adding to your basket market basket sorry i'm having a moment 
I love dragonflies too. I really, really do. So we're going to look at the basic techniques that we can apply to create designs like this. And we're going to start off with a little scrap length of that 18 gauge wire. And I'm even going to cut this one in half because you really don't need a huge amount just to connect all these earrings together. Now what I tend to do when I have wire scraps is I keep them in a little pot and after I've finished working for the day, I'll just make sure that any sharp ends, so with your flush cutters, with flush cutters, one side is a nice neat finish and the other side is slightly jagged. And I don't want to get caught out with that later, so I will trim that jagged end away, pop that in the melt pot, and then I know that I can pick up any one of my scrap lengths of wire and just get straight to work without any dramas, which is always good good so why don't we grab some of those wooden beads and make a start on a basic post drop earring now it's not a post earring because we're going to use an ear wire i've got a couple of little ear wires up at the top here but what we're going to do is to make a solid post now you can of course create wrapped loops on either end of a piece like this if you desire that level of security However, for earrings, I much prefer to consider the weight of the metal being used. So what we will do is grab a set of round pliers. You can use round nose pliers, you can use your multi-step bail makers, or you could also use your memory wire pliers. There are a couple of different ways of creating a simple loop. One way, you can estimate how much wire you will need which if you've been making jewellery with wire for a long time is quite easy. If you don't want to estimate, you can create that round form on the end of your piece of wire. Let's just rotate that around. And just before the very, very cut end of your wire touches that continuation of wire, we're going to turn that wire away. Now this is very, very basic stuff, but it's really cool to see how different your pieces will look given a single technique. So what I'm going to do is now make sure that the cut end fits against that angle change. And to do that, I'm going to push my finger into the angle and then use my pliers to push that firmly so that that cut end meets very, very neatly. And then I'm going to give it a hard squish with my pliers. Now the pliers I'm using today are bent chain nose pliers. You could also be using your standard chain nose pliers. These are all available in our store. At least the chain nose pliers are. We may be able to get bent chain nose at some point, but I know if you don't already have the bent chain nose, just grab yourself a set of chain nose pliers. They're really handy. You can do most of your wire working with those. One of the reasons I use my bent chain nose pliers is because I can show you things on screen that I wouldn't be able to show you with the standard straight chain nose. So we have ourselves a starting place. This is like one half of an eye pin. So I love mixed colour in jewellery. I also like playing around with sizes. So the silver daisy spacers are just a tiny bit smaller than the golden coloured sp daisy spacers. Let's see what comes up next. There we are. Might as well leave that ready to use in a second. So I've got two silver and one gold and I've got four beads. So I'm going to play around with the design. And the beauty of making jewellery yourself, especially with wire, is that if you load all these on, so let's load our beads into position. I'm just spacing between each of these possibly wood beads with one of those daisy spacers in two different colours, two different sizes pop that last one in and then the final bead and then what we're going to do is to turn the wire away now because I'm working with a really good solid bead I don't have to be very concerned about this angle being too close to the bead if I'm working with a crystal to protect the crystal I will put my thumbnail over the top of the bead whilst I pull that wire away at an angle if you're working with what might be wood or it might even be wood jasper I'm just going to make that angle change, just make sure that I'm happy with how that's sitting. And then I'm going to use the round section of my memory wire pliers. And you'll see that I do that quite slowly in small bites. I have 
been told that it's good to just take this slowly. You just take your time. Nobody is racing you. And even if you do this as slow as is humanly possible, you'll still have a pair of earrings to go out later if you want to, with a new pair of earrings in about five minutes flat. So there's a simple bar drop. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I have a client all she ever wants with earrings is beautiful beads, but on a straight line bar. Sometimes I will do a spiral at the bottom of her earring drop, which I'll show you how to do in a little while. But today we're going to use one of those loops to add into a giant jump ring, which I'm going to show you how to make one yourself. And we're going to use the other end to add our favourite charm so i'm going to use one of those dragonflies because gosh they are beautiful so all we're going to do now is strengthen our simple loop give that a good old squish turn the wire to suit your hands and i'm going to open half of that simple loop now this is how you would open a jump ring and what we're doing is we're creating a gap into which we can add our charm so I prefer when I'm making jewellery that the cut side be at the back of the design and the smooth side be at the front. So I will always orient my dragonfly so that the beautiful crystals, rhinestones sit at the front of the design. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you get that the other way around. It is simply my preference. So if you wanted to put that directly onto an earring wire, you have already made yourself a really attractive earring. One of the reasons I like this particular design is that the drop part is very reminiscent of the body of a dragonfly. So you can play around with all of the different colours in the beautiful JJB Boutique Spring Collection that we have available. So there's part one. Let's pop that over there. You could equally have dropped in your gorgeous teapot. Now, if you're a member of our Magical Mystery Bead Box Club, there was a box a little while ago which featured lots of teapots and teacups and things. It was an Alice in Wonderland themed magical mystery bead box. If you desire, you may pop over to the website after the live. Go have a look and see if you find a box that is still available that you fancy. Now, the quantity of boxes varies in stock on a daily basis as people snaffle them up. So if the Alice one isn't there, there are so many beautiful former magical mystery bead boxes that you can connect with. So let's have a look at making ourselves an oversized jump ring. Now for this, I'm going to be using my six step bale making pliers. Love teapots and cups. They were gorgeous, weren't they? They had a whole beautiful range of colours with enamel. So for this, I'm going to start by really warming through my again 18 gauge round wire now i'm working with a medium temper so it's like a german style copper core copper coated non-tarnish so it doesn't really matter if you work with craft wire you can work with a medium temper german style if you wanted to work with a slightly softer wire please feel free to do so but you will need to remember if you're working with soft wire to add that strength. So I'm opening and closing a number of times on that loop. That now means that that loop has got a reasonable amount of residual strength. So as long as you don't hang your house keys off the bottom, you should be fine. So I've warmed the first part of this section of wire. And what I'm going to do is just show you how you can, in a pinch, make yourself a jump ring. I'm going to use the largest step on my bale makers. And I'm going to rotate that around with the cut end moving away along the pliers so that when I rotate, rotate, rotate around and I'm very softly, you can see that we're creating a spring. Now, it doesn't have to be a tight spring, but the point is that if the cut end is going in that direction, you can make loads. If you have it coming back this way, you've literally just got that distance before you run out of space and have to slide it off the pliers. So let's have a look. Now, what you will find is that the first little bit is sticking up a little bit. And that's because it's very tricky to get that to sit flat on the pliers. So what I start off by doing is trimming away just a tiny, tiny fraction like so. And then what we're going to do is find, let's move that out of the way so you can see better. 
what we're going to do is use our flush cutters in the opposite orientation so that I end up with a flush cut here. Now, if I bring my cutters in, that will give me the wrong side. So what I need to do is flip that over. And no, it was the right way. I'm, I'm absolutely silly. What we're looking for is to have the flush cut at the end. I was right in the first place. I doubted myself. So if I give that a snip, I've got plenty of wire left to work with. And what we're going to do is just very gently coerce this into a closed ring shape. Just bring that up slightly higher on the screen. Making sure that you're happy that those are still good and round. It's very, very easy with those bail makers. And that the two ends are both flush cut and they're very, very close together. I'm going to apply just a little bit of pressure whilst I squish the closure part of my jump ring first and in doing so I'm really setting that wire firmly then I can go all the way around with my flat facing pliers now if you're worried about marking your wire you can of course use a wire whammer or is it a whacker I can never remember what they're called two sheets of uh, plastic material and you smack them together over the top like so and that hardens your wire without causing any issues you can also of course use your nylon jaw pliers or you could give it a hammer and really mark it whichever works for you the main thing is that that is now pretty strong if i just give that a little bit of a you'll see that that's very different to how it would have been before we hardened it so just again going to open that up and then you can slide as many or as few pieces on so the piece with the teapot exactly the same technique what i've done is i've used a couple of these metallic nuggets like so and one of the rose gold color rhinestone tire spacers and then i've added the teapot in at the bottom so it's exactly the same technique and once you have done you can just close that back up making sure that those two ends are nice and neat give it another squish and that's your first very very simple you can either go for a straight drop bar or you can have that enhanced with the charm of your choice. So very, very easy to customise, very, very easy to change up. I'm just going to show you the one time because it's exactly the same technique. So for this second set, we have got a little bar, simple loops on either end. And I've just added to that beautiful faceted rondelle some golden bead caps. On the lower loop, I have hung two little drop sections. So obviously you've got that gorgeous strawberry charm, which I think is absolutely delightful. Strawberry is my favourite food in the world. It's beautiful. And then I've rung the changes on this bar drop. So again, it's exactly the same technique. But instead of starting with a bead and ending with a bead, I've switched it around so that I've started with a metallic spacer and ended with a metallic spacer. When you're working with crystal beads and certain gemstone beads, you will absolutely want to protect them as much as you can. So this is an, a way that you can work with a slightly more delicate gemstone bead or crystal bead of your choice. And you can protect those beads with those little spacers. So really the last thing that I have to show you are these little babies and oh my goodness as bead caps they're fabulous but I wanted more charms so I've added two charms down at the bottom of one of those little bar sections and I've made them into charms by flattening the bead caps so very very softly to begin with I'm just going to use my hand to very very gently now this is a metal it's a pressed metal so it will react to the warmth of your body so i'm very very subtly just using thumb and forefinger to get this to go flat to begin with what we don't want to do with a pressed metal charm or bead cap as the case might be is to shock it and if you go straight in with a pair of pliers or if you put this on a block and immediately hammer it the metal's not going to be terribly happy with that. So in order to make it a little bit more of a subtle movement, you can use your body to warm that through and ensure that that central section is relatively flat. Now, it's only relatively flat compared to its bead cap form. 
So you can see the difference between them. Let's pop that one back out of the way. And once you've given that a bit of a flatten by hand, you can then start to move in with your preferred flat facing pliers. Now, to begin with, again, I'm actually moving quite softly and gently just to make sure that I can make this flat before I start pressing really firmly. So that one's pretty much there already. I'm going to repeat that. Give that a very gentle squish. And each time I squish on the outside of the three prongs, I'm also covering that central loop. Now you can obviously use these exactly as they are intended as bead caps, but I love them as a charm and in order to create greater movement. So today's class is about adaptability, about having a very, very basic skill set, but being able to make literally hundreds, thousands of combinations of beautiful jewellery without any additional skills being needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off my beautiful dragonfly from the bottom of this bar earring drop slide that back into the tin it's not a tin it's a heart goodness gracious me so these are pretty much as squished as i want them but what i'm going to do now is just give them one last squash and what you might notice it's kind of hard to see on camera sometimes is that squishy 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 the color on the surface of the metal changes. Let me see if I can show you. Whoops, a daisy. It becomes shinier. So that's a lovely muted metallic bronze. I have a question. Diane, are all the beads you're using from the Market Basket bead mix? They absolutely are. And on that subject, after making those two pairs of earrings which you could separate into five pairs of earrings or more if you keep those charms separate i've still got all of these beads left over including and not limited to beautiful enamel pieces potentially clay not 100 percent sure there's more wooden beads the spacers galore forgot actually to show you these giant rhinestone spacers gorgeous and my little my little sheep nah. sorry not sorry not sorry in the slightest all of the beads that i'm using today came from the market basket which is from jjb boutique spring i have popped a link for this mix and to the general page in the video description so do please have a look see what you think now, once I have given both of these a really hearty squish with my flat facing pliers, I'm going slowly because I don't want to disrupt. I don't want to accidentally catch a corner and break it away. But what I'm doing here is I'm making something that's flat and a flat thing will move very differently to if you just hung this on the bottom of an earring. So we're making it into a charm. But what we're also doing is making something that's got lots and lots of movement to it. Let me just see. I think there is a slight difference in colour because it will be pressed in one direction. So this is the underside. You can see the, dim the dimples are concave. And on this side, the dimples are convex. So that's something that you could again play around with. You could have one on the slightly darker side, one on the slightly lighter side. Now, in order to give this clustered, I know it's spring, but clustered snowflake effect, what I wanted to do was to use different apertures up at the top of these charms. So let me just put them both on the same side. I quite like them both on the same side. So you can see that you can't really hang them centrally because they've got two little ears in each corner, two little bunny ears. So what I wanted to do to get them to not sit one on top of the other and hang at a funny angle was let me just grab that earring. So let's say that this is the front. What I'm going to do is slide one side through the first ear. <laughs> You'll get used to me. And then the second piece that I'm going to push through, instead of using this one, I'm going to use the one on the other side. So let's slide that into the little loop down at the bottom. On you go. They do go, I just can't see. Here we are. It's much closer if it's it's much easier if it's right up against your nose. So you can see that we get this clustering effect. And because they're balancing each other out, 
it looks ultra deep and really really lovely in terms of detail so once those are on the hook we're going to close that hook back up give it another last little squish to set it in place and then you have this lovely clustered effect in that metallic former bead cap i actually really like how this works i've got copper wire i've got wood toned beads i've got silver and gold with those daisy spacers and then we've got this kind of antique bronze down at the bottom so those are all made from the market basket bead collection let me just say hello hi my name is Jen if we haven't met before I am here today with Jesse James Beads to show you all about the little JJB Boutique Spring Launch they are a gorgeous gorgeous collection very very festive what was your favorite piece from earlier on did you like the topaz color oh these hexagons are magical I actually really like that for a 1920s headband. I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. Or we had the more aquatic green. Let's just give those a quick shimmy. They're beautiful colour. And I love the shape of these. Uh, Gabriella says, love your necklace. Hey, guess what? That'll be coming to YouTube really, really soon. And it, it's a blueberry patch blueberry patch so if you fancy making this join me later on not sure of the the launch date just yet but it's coming to youtube i imagine that will be linked in the blog as well and you can make that with me uh is there a tutorial for it coming up on jesse james beads youtube channel so we had those beautiful greeny ones as well we had the diffuser sphere with that gorgeous enamel Love that pretty, pretty pink floral enamel. OMG, love your necklace. It's coming soon to YouTube and the blog. And it possibly will be broadcast at the same time on Facey. Not 100% sure. Technical department is not my it's not my wheelhouse, to be fair. Daisy Chain was that two-part bead mix with those gorgeous, gorgeous ladybirds. Love those blue-green lentils. Let's bring the lentils. I don't know why they're called lentils. My lentils are kind of green and speckly and come from France. But that's because they're poi. Poi. I like saying that word. And then we have the gorgeous shell, which exploded. I opened it and it went, blah, it went everywhere. It's great. I do love it when beads literally unleash themselves. We had, this is so gorgeous. Look at that bird. And a nest with fresh spring eggs. I had check beads as well in a couple of different designs and colourways. And there's much, much more besides. Head over to the link I've popped in the video description. Don't know if it's down there, up there, over there. Not sure where it is on Facebook. <laughs> and then there was Apricot Delight with those beautiful composite beads and all their glorious detail. Bird's nest for Jessica. Isn't it absolutely stunning? Well, it has been my pleasure to be with you today with the gorgeous JJB Boutique Spring Collection. My name is Jem and I will be back very, very soon. I'll be on YouTube again soon. There are so many things coming up. I've just finished creating. Can I give you a sneak peek? No, you'll have to wait. That's coming up in two weeks' time when I will be back live on Facebook joining you. I think it will be 1pm Eastern time, but I guess you guys are already on summertime. We've got a little way to go yet, so hopefully it'll all line up soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me here today at Jesse James Beads. I will be back with you very, very soon. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Take care and bye for now.